Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and welcome to my first budget PC port report for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. So this will be from a budget PC gamer standpoint, what options we have. And we're taking a look at the entire settings menus. And by budget, I mean I'm not checking out ray tracing or higher end stuff. We're just looking at what's available, what can you do and what the game offers on the PC port department. We're not discussing budget performance until I go through the menu, so stay tuned. But you can find the timestamps down in the description if you want to get directly into that. So Guardians of the Galaxy released a couple days ago. I made a couple live streams testing 4 GB GPUs and 2 GB GPUs. It doesn't launch on 2 GB cards. But into the settings, we got a lot of options so far. There's a gamepad option to select the control scheme that you need. Doesn't seem to be able to rebind the buttons for the controller, which I do not like. I wish there was an option. Then all the options that you would expect for controllers, if you're using one. Mouse and keyboard. So this is major for a PC port. You can rebind your keys. So there's a menu. You can rebind basically everything, it seems. There's also an option that I really like. Double press directional keys to dash. So in order to dash, instead of pressing a button, you can double tap on the WSD keys and it'll dash in that direction. And then control spaceship with mouse, yes or no. You can use keys instead of the mouse. That's good compatibility, if you ask me. Good options for mouse and keyboard. Then on the display, this is a big one. Screen calibration, this is for your brightness. Usually, at least in my particular screen, 55% did well, but it works fine. It does what you would expect. There's an HDR option for you people with an HDR display. I do not have one. There is full screen, exclusive full screen, which I love seeing this option. That means that it's not borderless full screen, it's full screen taking up the entire screen at all times. So the GPU does what it can do best, which is rendering the image correctly. Then there's a resolution option. We got the usual resolutions. There is ultra wide. There is also 4K support, as you would expect. And you can select which refresh rate you're going to use. So yeah, need options right there. Everything that we would expect. Custom resolutions appear to be showing up just fine. Then maximum refresh rate. We got 30 to 144. So if you have a high refresh rate display, it should show up up to 144. You cannot go further, so 200 FPS people, sorry, but the game goes up to 144. There's also a V-Sync option, which will lock the frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor. Personally, I like using this on a driver level, not in the game options, but the option is there if you need it. Then there's an interesting option, dynamic resolution, which allows you to dynamically change the resolution when you need certain frame rates. So for example, you're getting, I don't know, 60 frames in most levels, but in some others you drop into the 50s. Well, this should dynamically change the resolution to maintain that frame rate. Unfortunately, it's not working as intended, it seems. I didn't see any change in performance. I was getting 55 frames, for example. And to get those five extra frames, it lowered the resolution pretty low, but it didn't seem to lock it to 60, so maybe there's something they need to do there to fix it. But overall, it's nice to have the option in more PC games. It, it just needs to work correctly. Also, resolution scale, the usual. If you want to keep your native resolution and just lower the quality of the graphics in-game, well, there's a handy resolution scale from 50% all the way up to 100 then on the amd fidelity fx contrast adaptive sharpening this is no F not fsr so if you were looking for fidelity fx super resolution which lowers the resolution to something lower and it upscales this is not it this is only sharpening contrast adaptive sharpening like we've seen in many games which is nice to see so you can tweak it if it looks too soft you just increase this option then NVIDIA DLSS is also available, but I don't have an RTX card, so it's nice to have the option, but it's not available for us budget users. Then, what else do we have? We have graphics, which is another major one. You got the graphics presets, which are low, medium, high, very high, and ultra. The thing is, something is very weird. On this one, if you play on medium, many options are on low, but they enable the reflections and the motion blur. 
on low, yeah, you get everything on the lowest, but on medium and high, many options are on low, which is kind of uh, odd, I don't know, pretty weird. But anyway, from low to ultra, the visual difference is pretty minor. You get better draw distances of grass, of 3D objects, and higher resolution shadows. But honestly, I'm not noticing a huge difference when looking at them side by side. Here's a short clip looking at low versus ultra. Ultra on the left, low on the right. And as you can see, the biggest difference between low and ultra is the reflections, there is no screen space reflections, as you can see at the left there on Ultra, you got a reflection, on low you have no reflection, more like a cube map, it seems. Then the particles are just uh, dynamic, so they're not going to match, <laughs> that's why it might seem like there's more particles on low. And you can also see those instant objects, they're a little bit less quality, but overall, at least in this section, even the shadows still look great. So, Ultra for me here is, okay, more reflections in real time. So again, Ultra on the left, low at the right. As you can see on Ultra, we can see that vegetation into the distance. So more detail into the distance and some rocks out of a higher quality into the distance. So some stuff disappears, but I hardly notice it honestly while playing the game as you can see those 3d objects into the distance lose their roundness to them and again the reflections are affected so the screen space reflections are gone but there's still something there to fill the the, <laughs> the gap still looks great on low i don't know very minor difference between ultra and low and you get a five frame per second boost so yeah so yeah, with that comparison out of the way, as you can see, the performance difference between Ultra and Low is very minor. It's a 5 to 6 FPS improvement. So my advice is, if you have a budget GPU with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, go for Ultra, lower the level of detail to medium, shadows to low. Then on quality of the textures, put it on low, especially if you have less than 6 gigabytes of VRAM, put it on low. Then ray trace reflections, well, budget users do not have access to these options, so I will skip over it. Then there is screen space reflections, which are the reflections that are kind of real time with the information on the screen. Well, you can toggle it on or off. The game is full of reflective surfaces everywhere, so it might be a good performance improvement. But in many areas, it will be a major hit to visuals. But if you need the performance, you can turn it off, which is good. Then you got motion blur and radial blur. Motion blur appears to be per object motion blur, so you can disable it. If you don't like the blur, personally, I like to <laughs> disable it. And then you got the radial blur, which is the blur when you're moving very fast at the edges of the screen. It will just blur the image. Personally, I like turning these off. It bothers me. Chromatic aberration, not sure why it's even an option in the game. It looks terrible, that's why it's called an aberration. <laughs> so yeah, why the hell is this an option in games? I do not know. Then we got Lens Flare and Death Fulfilled, so if you don't like these, it shouldn't affect performance much. You can turn it on or off. Same with Death Fulfilled. Some people do not like Death Fulfilled. I like it in cutscenes, personally, it looks more cinematic for the cutscenes. It doesn't seem to have Death Fulfilled in actual gameplay. And then we got the light scattering, which seems to be like those light shafts, the god rays, which on low seem to be lower resolution, but I hadn't noticed a huge difference that it breaks the graphics. So yeah, that's basically the graphics options menu. I was expecting a lot more from a AAA game, honestly. More options to lower the visuals even further for us budget users, but the option is not there, so very minor differences. Again, my advice, keep it on a mix between medium and low, level of detail on medium, shadows on low, textures on low. If you can, enable the reflections, but that's about it. <laughs> this is how you get the best performance, I would say, without a, my a major hit to the visuals. Then, audio. So there's a lot of people that like audio in video games, I'm one of them. So we got all the options that you would expect in separate sliders. And there's a very handy options for us uh, streamers. License audio on rough, so 
this makes all the licensed music be disabled so you can stream it with peace of mind that you're not getting copyrighted which is great then there's audio accessibility which you can do i don't know much about this but if you guys know what this is about it says adjust the highest playback level of the loudest sounds to help minimize certain peaks in the soundscape so it's probably to make it more consistent on the volume side eq preset we have high shelf low shelf notch 80 hertz notch 120 notch 200 500 1 kilohertz personally i don't know what this means <laughs> but these are the options available for you guys that know what you're doing with audio unfocus mix says enabling this will reduce the presence of non-critical elements from the soundscape such as ambiences as well as a lot of other sound effects in order to deliver a leaner sounding experience which sounds good then advanced audio settings you got your device presets i love seeing this in video games so depending on what you're using you can do your own custom um, configuration and the dynamic range so yeah i keep it on headphones because i'm always using headphones so i keep it like this side by side stereo so that's for the audio then on languages you can change the voice and the text you got french Italian, Spanish, there's a lot of voice differences. I like that Spanish, Latin Spanish is also there. That's nice. This is all in the main menu. Text, well, different languages for text, which also is many languages. It's nice to have this inside the options of the game itself. Subtitles on or off, and there's closed captions as well. And there's advanced subtitle settings, such as showing the character name, the subtitle size, the spacing of the letters with an example at the right, which is great. Bold text, if you want bold text. Background, so a lot of great accessibility options for subtitles, which is nice to see. Then, accessibility. There's a lot of accessibility options. I'm not going through all of them because I know very few of them. But if you want to fiddle with the settings, you can make it as you wish. Objective lock, display timer, auto lock on next target. This is a good option, actually. This is something I would use personally. So yeah, the transparency of the dots on the screen. That's nice to have, but I don't know much to say more. Then the legal stuff, Square Enix members, which I already have my account linked. And there's a benchmark tool. And well, let me open up the bench. That's all for the options, though. Let me open up the benchmark tool for you guys. So it's nice to have a benchmark tool to be able to compare hardware, test your settings and all that. But the benchmark runs nothing like the game, especially in the first level. We're talking about performance now. The first level is the worst running level in the game, apparently. You'll be seeing a beautiful planet with a lot of distant detail. But then in the benchmark, you'll see nothing about that. You see the hub areas, you see places with a lot of NPCs, which is good to have as a stress point. But it doesn't seem to be realistic on how the game actually performs. Because again, in the first level, you're looking into a distance in a beautiful scenery. And when you're looking into a distance, you get like 20 frames on a 4 gigabit card. Yeah, I know, below the minimum requirements, but the rest of the game is fine. So it seems to be an issue with the very beginning of the game. Again, we're looking into those purple rocks into the distance. But after that, it smooths out just fine. It runs okay. But the first 40 minutes, you have a very terrible performance. That again, not comparable with what you see on the benchmark tool. So keep that in mind. The first level is the major stress point. But after you go through it, 40 minutes of 20 to 40 frames up and down, depending on where you look you'll be fine so what about ultra wide support well i can do 2560 by 1080 that's the maximum my monitor can support and well the option is there you're happy to see it works in complete full screen no fiddling around needed it works right out of the box and i'm also happy to report that well first not happy to report this but in the menu you don't get the the menu extended which is a minor thing at least in my book but in the game itself, you do get the extra FOB, so it's not a cropped image with pillars at the right and left of the screen. That is on the cutscenes, so when you're playing the game, you'll get full 21x9. The UI is not stretched, it's fit on the 16x9 layout. 
So yeah, the health bars, the name of the characters, all that will be like if you were on a 16 by 9 monitor. So it doesn't stretch the icons or anything like that, which is good. Um, and what else? Well, the cutscenes are locked at 16 by 9 with pillars at the right and left of the screen. But again, it looks gorgeous in ultra wide. You get the extra FOB. You don't get a cropped image like in some other games. So yeah, good so far on the ultra wide side of things. Works right out of the box. And now we're closing the video talking about performance. So I tested this game on an RX 570 4GB, GTX 1050 Ti 4GB, and a 1650 Super 4GB as well. And as long as you have a 4GB card, the game should launch. But once you get into the very beginning of the game, in this part, you'll notice a major drop in performance. We're looking at these rocks into the distance, you'll see. When the camera pans into that stuff into the distance, well, you get drops into the 20s like this, which I couldn't fix by lowering the resolution to below 720p by anything like that. People that have RTX 3060s told me that they couldn't go over 60 frames consistently in that location right here. So that's a major bummer because this is a very first level, so very bad first impression if you're playing the game for the first time on a budget PC. But again, we're below the minimum requirements. This was easy to replicate on a 570, on a, sorry, on a 570, on a 1050 Ti, on a 1650 Super. So yeah, you should be able to play the game just fine after this area is done. The thing is, the first 40 minutes to an hour is this area. So when you look into the distance, you're going to get major drops in performance. But after that should be smooth sailing. The thing is, yeah, the very first thing that is breathtaking, like this, visually, just kills your frame rate no matter what. So depending on your GPU, you're going to get over 20 or below 20. So far, again, if you have a budget GPU, well, just try to chug along between 20 and 40 frames in this first hour of the game, and then you should be just fine, like you will see in this part. As you can see in other levels, it's going to be over 30 basically all the time. So if you have a 570, a 1050 Ti, a 1650 Super, something against those lines should be okay. And if you have a 2 gb card, well, the game is not going to launch. It's going to say the D3, D12 device wasn't found or something like that. So on a 2 gb card, you're not going to get any playable numbers because the game refuses to launch. So, if you have a 1052 gigs, a 1030, a 750 Ti, well, the game is not going to launch at all. It's going to have an error message on the screen. So, yeah. I mean, if you have a 4 gb card or a 3 gb card, the game should launch. But again, expect those major performance drops that I showed you in the first level. And after that, should be pretty smooth overall, like a demanding game. But on the GPU side it's super demanding, on the rest it seems to be okay, not super taxing. But yeah, make sure to have at least 3 GB of VRAM to be able to <laughs> actually launch the game. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see how it runs, links in the description. See you next time, thanks for watching, and please give me some feedback on how this PC budget port report thing worked out for you. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.